Hello and welcome. This year, a referendum will be held in Australia to determine whether Australian Aboriginals will have a voice to Parliament enshrined in our Constitution. Aboriginals migrated to Australia from Southeast Asia about 45 to 50,000 years ago when there was a land bridge. In 1788, European settlers arrived in Sydney and life as an Aboriginal was about to change just as it had for the original peoples of Canada, America and New Zealand. Until 1949, Aboriginals in Australia were not considered citizens and not counted in censuses. The right to vote and own land came later. I want to tell you the story of Len Waters, a truly remarkable man. Leonard Victor Waters was born in 1924 and was the first Aboriginal Australian military aviator and the only one to serve as a fighter pilot in the Royal Australian Air Force during World War II. He served defending Australia, although it didn't defend him. That applied to for Len's grandfather, George Bennett, who was a veteran of World War I who served with the 29th Battalion AIF on the Western Front. Len was a good student excelling at mathematics and geography and enjoying his sport. He had an interest in the pioneering aviators, Charles Kingsford Smith, Amy Johnson, Bert Hinkler and Charles Lindbergh and read stories of Biggles, Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. He had, as he put it, his head in the clouds from an early age. He left school at 14 years of age, working as a shearer for less than one-sixth the wage that white men received. Then, on the 7th of December 1941, Japan launched an attack on Pearl Harbor. President Roosevelt declared war and Australia followed suit. Men and women of Australia, we are at war with Japan. As a loyal British Commonwealth country, Australia had responded to Britain's plight and sent three army divisions to North Africa and the Mediterranean, Navy ships to European waters and many pilots to serve in the RAF. Prime Minister Curtin defied Churchill, bringing many home to defend Australia. Many more men were needed here. The military had previously restricted the recruitment of Aboriginal people. That was relaxed after Australia came under direct attack. Len Waters volunteered for service in the Royal Australian Air Force and in 1942 at Brisbane, was accepted as an aircraft mechanic. He later volunteered to train as a pilot. The air crew interviewer thought he looked, quote, a bit rough, but should make a fighter. His flying training began in December 1943 and he studied hard to make up for his lack of education. Waters graduated fourth out of an intake of 375 students, 48 going on to become pilots. He trained on de Havilland Tiger Moths, moving on to Wirraways and converting to P-40 Kitty Hawk fighters. Whilst on leave, Waters was briefly jailed in Moree, New South Wales for not carrying an identity card, which was one of the racially discriminatory institutions affecting Aboriginal people at the time. These were desperate times for Australians. In 1941, 10 hours after Pearl Harbour, Clark Field in the Philippines was attacked with neatly lined up B-17s, B-25s and Kitty Hawks blown apart. Not one aircraft took off to defend the base. General MacArthur should have been sacked but wasn't. Ten months later, Japanese forces took the Solomons, Rabaul and northern New Guinea. New Guinea, to the north of Australia, was a colonial outpost with just 7,000 European plantation owners and administrators. At best, it was a buffer to an Australian invasion, but also could be a base from which to control Australia's sea lanes. In November 1944, Waters was posted to No. 78 Squadron, a fighter unit based on the island of Norm 4 off Dutch New Guinea. He was allocated a P-40 Kitty Hawk, aptly named Black Magic by its previous pilot. At this stage of the war, Japanese aircraft were almost non-existent in the Southwest Pacific Theatre. 
78 Squadron's main role was ground attack, bombing and strafing enemy positions. Waters flew 95 sorties from there and later from the air bases at Moratai and Tarakan in Borneo. During one mission, his aircraft was struck by a 37mm cannon shell that embedded itself behind him in the cockpit without detonating. Here is his wife Gladys talking about that. Len joined the Air Force because that was his dream. Len was flying, they were going out doing clean-up. Got a shell from a Japanese attack up between his back and the back of his seat where the fuel tank was. Now it didn't go off. Len didn't know how big it was and he was scared. He said he was really scared. Now he was two and a half hours before he could get back to his airport and they had to clear the drone of all aircraft because they didn't know if the shell would go off. And Lane said when he went to land, he said, I could have landed on eggshells. I had the best landing I've ever had in my life. By the end of the war, Waters was commanding operations whose personnel included commissioned officers. A colleague described him as gaunt, a genial figure, humble despite his daring feats. He returned to Australia in August 1945. After his discharge, he attempted to start a regional airline serving southwest Queensland, but he was not able to secure finance or bureaucratic agreement. His letters to the government weren't replied to. He never flew a plane again. He wrote later that, having put off his uniform, he simply returned to being a black fellow. He returned to shearing for a living. Len passed away in 1993 aged to 69. His service was recognised after his death when Australia Post issued a stamp featuring his portrait and his kitty hawk and as well many municipal parks, streets, suburbs and buildings and an overpass were named in his honour. Times change. 2023 Anzac Day ceremonies have proudly included Aboriginal servicemen and women to once and for all declare our nation's gratitude. Thank you for watching this video. Comments always welcome. Liking and subscribing promotes our channel and encourages new content.